there are different techniques uh, that help patients feel more comfortable, and sometimes a patient has to experiment with either to see if that, if that helps them specifically. So the progesterone injection or the progesterone in oil injection, because the progesterone is mixed in an oil, it needs to be injected into the muscle rather than subcutaneously. And that's why it's gonna be more uncomfortable than the other injections that are used during the IVF stimulation. Uh, both, <laughs> I mean, every, every patient is different. Some patients prefer heat, uh, either right before or right after the injection, and some people prefer ice. There are different techniques uh, that help patients feel more comfortable, and sometimes a patient has to experiment with either to see if that, if that helps them specifically. There are also numbing patches, believe it or not, which will numb the skin. They won't numb deeply, uh, but if that initial entry point is uncomfortable, it may help to, to get those uh, numbing patches as well. Uh, there are different ways to minimize or eliminate the use of a progesterone injection. Uh, there was a large randomized trial on the East Coast that looked at different regimens during a frozen embryo transfer to see what gives you the best chances for a good outcome or what maximizes your chances. And what they found was if you do progesterone injections every day or if you do vaginal progesterone three times a day and add an intramuscular injection every third day, outcomes are the same and better than if you do solely vaginal replacement. And so if you want to minimize risk of using an injection, uh, then I would do either that uh, protocol that requires three times a day vaginal and add the shot every third day, or nowadays what has become far more in favor, especially in light of certain data suggesting better placentation, better chance for a healthier pregnancy and delivery, is doing either a natural or modified natural transfer. And that's where you either time the transfer with a natural ovulation, or you could take a medicine called letrozole, make sure that you ovulate on that medicine, and then time the transfer with ovulation. And in that case, all you need is either nothing, or in some cases, your OBGYN or reproductive endocrinologist will give you maybe twice a day vaginal progesterone, so you're getting some additional supplement, but most of that progesterone is coming from your own body. There's natural and modified natural. They essentially are, have the same spirit in that they, they want to, the goal is to get you to ovulate. And once you ovulate, you time the transfer there. The main advantage there, far less medicine and for a far less short, uh, far less period of time or far shorter period of time, as opposed to a program cycle where you're, we're basically controlling everything by giving you all the hormones, you have to take the supplementation longer, a lot more medicine and those shots involved as well. Um, in terms of outcomes, in terms of live birth, about the same, but with the modified natural or natural cycles, uh, lower incidence of hypertensive disorders, it turns out, or, or high blood pressure type uh, disorders. Uh, the main advantage of the program cycle is that you can time the, let's say you, you're a very busy person and you need to schedule that transfer, then a program cycle makes sense because then you can literally schedule your transfer on a specific day. While with the other approach, you have to time the transfer with your ovulation and that's a little touch and go depending on when it happens.